Hi everyone, welcome to another DIY video where I'll be making something for the wildlife in the garden. So so far I've made an access hole in the gate for the hedgehog and put some water out for it. For the birds, I've made some feeders and put the water bath out. Now I want to help the amphibians, but also the birds and the mini beasts as well. So I'm going to be making a wildlife pond. If you were watching the podcast with Ria earlier on in the week, you'll know that an extraordinary range of animals can use garden ponds. Pond skaters, water lice, freshwater shrimps, damselflies and water beetles are just some of the mini beasts you might find using and breeding in your pond. You might even get things like um, amphibians, frogs and toads breeding in it as well. So making a wildlife pond really does make a huge difference. So let's get going on it. First up, you want to find a suitable location in the garden for your wildlife pond. You want somewhere that gets a nice little bit of sun during the day, but not in sun all day. I've chosen this nice spot in front of the garden wall um, because it provides a bit of cover for the pond as well. If you've got dogs or children, then make sure you think about somewhere that's safe uh, for them as well. Next up, you need to choose a container that's going to become your wildlife pond. You could use an old sink or a wide plant pot base or an old washing up bowl like this one, which comes with the added bonus of avoiding doing the washing up. As long as it's 20 to 30 centimetres deep, has a bit of strength to it and can hold water, then it'll be absolutely fine. If it has got holes, you could always invest in some pond liner, that'll stop the leaks coming as well. Here comes the strenuous bit, digging the hole for your wildlife pond. You want to dig the hole so that the rim of the container is level with the surface of the ground, so that things can get in and out of your pond nice and easily. To aid them with that, you can also add these gently sloping sides as well. Sink your container into this hole and check it's a nice snug fit and make any adjustments as necessary. Next you want to add a layer of clean gravel to the bottom of your pond and go foraging for some pebbles, rocks and sticks to add to. You want the newts and frogs and other mini beasts to be able to get in and out of your pond nice and easily, so give them plenty of stepping stones and access routes. So now you're just about ready to fill your pond. Tap water contains quite a few chemicals, so it's really not a good idea to fill it with that. So try and use a water butt or let it fill up naturally if you can. Obviously that's a bit tricky in summer letting it fill with rainwater, so if you have to use tap water, then leave it to stand on the patio for at least 48 hours and that will allow all the chemicals to evaporate before you put it in your pond. At this point you want to get hold of some plants for your pond. These need to be pond plants, ideally in mesh pond pots. Submerged pond weed helps to oxygenate the water and keep it nice and clear. Good native species to look out for are rigid hornwort and walled water milfoil. You also want some plants around the edge as well to provide cover for the frogs and the birds and everything that comes to visit. Things like water forget-me-not, lesser spearwort and marsh marigold are good ones to go for. Only add two or three of these as it's such a small space and we don't want to fill the whole pond. Unfortunately, as it's currently COVID-19 whilst I'm filming this, I can't get to a garden centre to get these pond plants at the moment, so I'll be adding them as soon as it's safe to do so. So now we have a completed pond, keep an eye on what starts using it. At first you might have a green algal skim on the top, that's perfectly normal, just remove that if that starts to build up. In summer the water's going to evaporate as well, so make sure you top it up from your water butt throughout the summer as well. Very sadly, the number of ponds in the UK countryside has declined by up to 70% in recent years. That's largely due to agricultural intensification, and it's a really serious problem because ponds are one of our most diverse freshwater ecosystems. As a result, species like dragonflies and many other pond creatures find themselves declining rapidly in recent years. So making a wildlife pond really does make a huge difference. Pond creatures are great at finding these little ponds for themselves, so be patient and you'll soon be getting all sorts of things visiting. First, you're likely to get things like freshwater shrimps and crustaceans, later on larger animals like water boatmen, and then amphibians like frogs turning up as well. It won't be long before you have a whole ecosystem in your little pond. It's such a really fun activity, so get out there and have fun making it and let us know what you find. That's it for today, but be sure to keep an eye out for what starts using your pond. Please like and share the video as usual, and send me any pictures and videos of your little ponds, I'd love to see them. And I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.